Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the finale of Let's Play Pokemon Gold. We're going to be doing a tier list like we did before. I just wanted to test that to make sure it worked there. It was not working prior. I've got some music going. We're just chilling, having a good time, and ranking some of these Pokemon. I think you're going to see a lot of surprises on this list as, um, you know, I, I didn't get to use every Pokemon that I wanted to, so I think there is going to be some surprises out there, and I've changed my mind on a lot of the Pokemon as well. Let me turn that down just a little bit. But first, let's start with our Stider Trio, because we know that they're all going in the S tier. They're all great Pokemon. All cool in design. Everything looks spectacular. Love them. Uh, Bayleaf is going up here as well, but the evolution is going down in the A tier. It's just not as good. Bayleaf is only going up there just because of the design. I like it a lot better, but that's just me. Quilava's whole evolutionary line is going to go up here. Maybe except for the second one. We'll keep it like that. Um, yeah, Typhlosion is a beast. And we're going to say the same thing. I don't like uh, Totodile's evolution here, but I love his final evolution. So, you know, something to be said there. And that's how they're going to be ranked. Um, let's see. First, uh, before I jump into a lot of this, I'm going to go grab the Megas real quick. Because we know that we do not use them in Generation 2. So we're going to go and grab all them quick. I'm quick scanning. It's been a long time. I don't know if he's a Mega. I, I have no idea. Um, mega Houndoom. And Mega Tyranitar. There we are. Okay, so now we can actually work our way through the list. Uh, this little guy. A lot of these guys, I don't know the name for him. But he's a C and so isn't Ferret, his evolution. Uh, not very great. Very early starter kind of Pokemon that you would grab. Who who is going to go down here with them as well? But Noctowl is actually going to go up in the B category. I like Noctowl simply for the design. I know it's less effective as a bird, but it's a pretty good Pokemon overall. Uh, these guys are going straight down here. Bug type sucks in this generation with the exception of a few, which I'm sure if you watch the Let's Play you already know, but... Yeah, just not great. Now, his evolution, on the other hand, is going up here with Noctowl. Pretty solid Pokemon. So, you know, not going to hurt him just because he's a bug. Um, this version of the Zubat line is going to go all the way up here. He is a tank. He's a very solid flyer Pokemon. Absolutely love him as a Pokemon. Maybe, maybe we'll drop him down just a little bit because there are better flyer options we're going to see. But very, very solid Pokemon. Okay, this guy, he's going down here. He's, just, he's such a pain to get. Terrible. But his evolution is going to go up here. Once again, just a very great evolutionary Pokemon. But didn't get the chance to use him just because he's so difficult to get. And by the time we have a water type. I mean, the water electric type, that's why he's going up here. But other than the typing, I, I don't particularly love him. Pichu is going all the way up to the top because, I mean, come on. Come on. You know? Um, all the rest of them, though. <laughs> Garbage. Really bad. With Togepi going even lower because Togepi you have to get. You're forced into it. Now, Togepi's evolution I'm going to put... I'm going to put right here. I don't use it personally, so I can't say anything great about him. It could be great. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, not great. These guys, at least he has the psychic typing. I'll give him that. This sounds like a lullaby. Um, at least he has the psychic typing. That's what helps him. And then his evolutionary form is going to go up one more. He's a little bit better, but he's not great. Sorry, some of these songs are really odd. But yeah, this Octu. Um, he's not great, but he's not bad either. So we're going to put him up there. Marie. Or is it... I don't know the beginning of the line. Yeah, Mareep. C. Okay, electric type. Doesn't learn a lot of electric moves, but okay. Flaffy is going to go up here in the B category. Pretty great Pokemon. And Ampharos all the way up the top. Uh, Ampharos was a stud throughout this game for our playthrough. I greatly appreciated having it on my team, and that's why it's going to go all the way up in the S category. 
Um, this little thing down here, and Maril is down here as well. Maril is bad. Maril's evolution is slightly better, but not much. Uh, Sudowoodo, a cool ground type. I'm gonna put him in the B category. He's not terrible, but I wouldn't use him myself. And then this is the evolution of somebody too. He's gonna go up in the B category. Once again, okay. You know, we see him from time to time, but not great. Um, then we have a lot of C's, like right in a row. This guy, this guy... This guy. Apom is going to stay down here as well. And so aren't these two. Man, yeah, you see, that's what I don't like about Generation 2 is there's just a lot of mediocre Pokemon. But fortunately, we are getting to some of the better ones here. Iamega, I believe is how you say his name. He's going up in the A category. He's a really strong, I think, bug ground type. Uh, really good team member. I know a lot of people still have them on their competitive teams to this day. So we're going to put him all the way up there in the A category, folks. This little guy, Wampert. Not great. And his uh, evolution, only slightly better. Um, yeah, pretty bad. Just really poor choices. Uh, let's see. Espeon. Espeon is a great psychic type. The best of this generation, I would say. And I'm, I love the psychic type, so something to be said about that. Then Umbreon. Umbreon's gonna go up here as well. A really solid dark type. Uh, there's a lot of dark types in this generation. So I don't feel like it needed another one. Although it, it is a cool take on the Eevee line. So, And I think it just looks cool. Murkrow in the B category. is okay. Just okay. You know, that's all I can really say about him. That's about it. Slow King. Um, gonna put him here again. Just because of the typing. Love Water Psychic. Love everything about it. Pretty strong, just ridiculously slow. That's why he wasn't on my team. Mischievous, 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 mischievous. Hmm. I'm gonna put mischievous in this category as well. Uh, not great. Don't love it. Unknown D failure, absolute failure. Th they make it out like it's supposed to be this great, great legendary type Pokemon and it turns out being like one of the weakest Pokemons it would have been cool I still think if like you had five or, or even six and then you could combine them into one and then up the stats like that was the way to do it have six in your party at once and then it evolves and combines all six of them into like just a group of them floating kind of like you see in the anime um but yeah that's my personal thoughts there, but just as a standalone Pokemon, there's a lot of mystery behind it, which makes it kind of cool, but it also sucks. Wobbuffet. Straight C category, my friend. Wobbuffet is not great at all. Don't like him. Drafferig. Uh, B category. He's okay. You know? He, he, he can pass. You could have him on a team and still do well, which I think is what I'm using this category here for. Whereas, you want to stick with these two. You know, obviously you want your starter, Ampharos, one of these two. That's kind of how I'm trying to play it. It's like, this is like the solid category to have on the team. This is like, okay, you can make it work right here. And this is kind of like, eh. And then this is just either bad or miscellaneous. Oh, uh, the Pinecone Pokemon trash. Don't like them. Fortress, a little bit better. Man, um... I'm going to put him down here, and I'm going to explain why I'm putting him down here. I'm putting him down there because I don't play by the use of, like, stalling. Now, if you are somebody who likes to stall a lot, I would say he's more in the, the B and A category in that case. But because of the style that I play, he's going to go down here. Um, you know, he's, he's good, but um, just not my cup of tea. I, I don't like the way he looks. I think it's a very dumb design. And I know he's built to be a fortress. It's legitimately his name. Kind of. But, um, yeah, it's just not my cup of tea. Dunsparce. I did not pick up a Dunsparce, which was a mistake. But I hate Dunsparce. He looks ugly. Although his evolution is a very solid Pokemon. Uh, you know, arguably a, a terrific Pokemon. So he's going to go up in the A category. He's pretty cool. Steelix. Steelix is a legend. Right up there in the S category, especially in this generation. Steel made a huge impact, and it, it just kicks ass throughout the whole generation. So why wouldn't you have it on your team? Plus, it's so easy to get on your team. So, there's a plus. 
Um, this little shit and his evolution. Really bad. Same with Quillfish. Just really bad Pokemon. Scissor. Back up here again. For the same reason as Steelix. I would give it to Scissor. More than Steelix. And I know I try not to order these, but when it comes down to like two like that, I'm, I'm gonna try to weave out which one I think is the best. But, um... Yeah, I would give it to Scissor over Steelix, just based on design. Uh, Steelix is more of a defensive front. Uh, Scissor is kind of a defensive front as well, because it has that steel typing, you know, meshing with the bug. But it has more attack options, which I greatly appreciate. But we're going to go down to Shuckle. Um, I'm going to put him... Ugh, I'm going to put him up in the B... Because he kind of does what Fortress does, but in my opinion, he looks cooler and does it a lot better. You know, for this generation, his HP stat, I believe, is pretty out pretty out there. It's pretty great. So, you know, based on that alone, he's going to make it into the B category. Heracross, our legend. I love Heracross so much. Such a great Pokemon. Uh, 10 out of 10. Just Heracross all day. If you doubt me, uh, go watch the Let's Play series. Just go watch it. Watch Heracross become the champ of the team. Um, this guy, Sneasel, he's going up in the B. Um, I tend to put anything that has an ice typing up in the B or can learn ice moves uh, a little bit higher on the list. Just because I tend to use dragon types, so it tends to be a pain in the ass for me. And because of that, I acknowledge that it is a solid Pokemon and no solid moves. Okay, Teddy, Ursa, and the little teddy bear. Uh, same situation. Uh, the little teddy bear down here, not really all that great. And then his evolution form. Okay, pretty solid, but not great. Uh, these guys. Uh, just why? Why would you pick him? I I'm going to put him up a little bit higher. Because looking down here, realizing the lack of fire types solely on the team. Uh, looks like you really only have one. So, with that being said, um, he's okay. You know, if you wanted to stick to a pure Gen 2 team and you needed a fire type and you wanted it to be all Generation 2, he's going to be your only option if you don't pick Cyndaquil at the start. So, I guess there's that, but not great would be my overall assumption. These guys, once again, Ice type. Ice type, Ice type, Ice type. It is optimal to have at least a Pokemon that knows ice moves on your team in case you come across dragons, which you will in any generation, so very good to have a strong ice type. Uh, this guy, don't like him. Don't like him either. Um, this guy, he looks cool. I didn't use him. He looks cool, though. That's what we're going off of. This guy is garbage. He's trash. And... He, let's see this guy right here. He, he's okay. He looks pretty cool, right? Skymery. Now, for being a Sky Armory, it's going up in the A category. I don't think it's as cool as Steelix and Scissor. And that may just be, as you'll see moving forward in later generations. I love Generation 1 Pokemon. Love everything about him. And he's just like too... I don't know. I, just, I don't love him as much as these guys. Although you will see, because I'm going to start doing like, what if I was the gym leader or the champion... Of each of these regions. You will see when I'm the gym leader. Skarmory may be on my team. I'm still considering it. It's going to come out on like Mondays. I'm thinking of doing like uh, miscellaneous Mondays. Just just a video out there. You know maybe once a month. Maybe every Monday. But 20-30 minutes or so. And that's enough of that. I'm not going to get into it too much. But um, yeah. So because of that uh, Skarmory's. It's a cool Pokemon. Wouldn't be my first pick. Um, like I said, you, you just have better options, but looks cool. Oh, here's your other fire type option. And actually this is a very fire type, solid fire type option. He's going to make it all the way up here. Houndoom. How could I forget about him? He would be your other fire type. I think he's fire and dark. Um, the pain in the ass is that, uh, all the team rocket people are going to have dark type Pokemon. So it's not really going to help you for like half of the battles but i mean he is a much better fire type than this little guy here in my opinion and he just looks substantially cooler which is a lot of what i go for i like the look like the aesthetic has to be pleasing for me to pick a pokemon and then the typing also has to work well so he covers those bases a little bit better 
than this little slug with a rock flaming on his back does. Kingdra, all the way at the top. The dragon typing, throws it right over the edge. Great Pokemon. Okay, these guys, okay. This little guy's going here, and Domfan is going way up here. If I remember, the only downside is he's ridiculously hard to get, and by the time you get him, ground types aren't really effective in the generation anymore, just from playing through it, but um, is a Pokemon I definitely would love to have on my team at some point in time, just never really had the opportunity to do so. Um, this guy, I don't like him. Don't like him at all. Nothing about him. Just don't like it. Don't like it. Okay. Stantler. He's going to go up in the B category. I've never used one. And I've, I've never caught one either. But he looks cool. It's B category it is for him. Uh, this guy. I'm going to throw him up in the B too. Because he, he falls in the same thing. You know. He just looks pretty snazzy. Um, we got more baby Pokemon. I'm just going to throw all these guys in the C category. I mean, their evolutions are great, but they on their own aren't going to hold you against the team. And I'm realizing how quick we're getting through this. Like, holy crap. Hitmon top. I'm going to put him in the B. I like the other Hitmons better. That's why he's falling down in the B category. But you know what? He, he is pretty cool, and it's nice to have some alternatives in there on some old classics. So the B category works for Hitmon top. Mill tank, one of the biggest pains in the ass, but a solid, solid defense if you need one for this generation. So that he's gonna go up to the B category. Uh, let's see this little guy. I don't know her name, but she's going up in the A. The HP stats are ridiculous. Just an absolute unit. It does what the stall Pokemon hope to do on such a level that Fortress doesn't come close. Mill tank doesn't come close. This Pokemon is the ultimate staller. So if you want a staller on your team, that's the way to go. It's usually not how I play, but if I was to pick any of them, that's who I'm picking. Now we got the legendary beasts, the pseudo legendary, and these guys right here, the legendary Pokemon. So let's start with the pseudo legendary. Um, this guy's okay. He's okay, and I think we're going to work our way straight up. Actually, you know what? I think these two fall in the same... Nah, we'll throw them in the A just to show our respect to the pseudo-legendary. But Tyranitar, obviously, pseudo-legendary of the generation and an ultimate tank. He's going all the way up to the top. You gotta. It's Tyranitar. Come on. The legendary beast, uh, Raikou, is going up in the S category. Clearly. Sukun, however say his name, he's going up there as well. And Entei is going to go into the A category. He is just... He's the weakest of them, honestly. Um, his design is always what makes me like him the most. But I'm basing this kind of purely off of not just aesthetics. Like I said, it needs to be how practical they are to use as well. And Entei's not a very practical Pokemon to use. So based on that, he's not going to make the cut here today. But once again, a solid Pokemon. Now we have our legendaries, and Lugia and Oho are going to go right up to the top along with Celebi. Surprise, surprise. The legendary and whatever mythical Pokemon all make it up there. Now if I had to rank one over the other, I have to give the edge to Lugia for having the psychic typing. Although Oho is... Lugia doesn't learn any effective psychic moves for a while in the generation as a whole. So... Oho is, tends to be more reasonable because I don't rank my Pokemon up to level 100. But um, overall, I think Lugia is a better Pokemon. Now, I know I went through that quick because, you know, I just did. I went through it really quick. Um, part of it is because I don't know a lot of the Pokemon. I didn't pick from a ton of them. You know, I fought against them clearly, but I didn't pick a ton out during the gameplay. And another thing is, is you'll see as this goes forward... Some of these generations are a little bit more foreign to me. Generation 2 kind of being that weird. It was the first one I played and I, I beat the game with... Who? I probably beat it with... Um, Cyndaquil's fully evolution here. Quilava. Or is that a... Uh, it's Typhlosion. She's a moron. I probably beat it with Typhlosion and a few of these guys here. I, I really haven't steered out of my normal. So for this generation, you know, I got through it pretty quick. Uh, generation 3, it'll probably take me a while to do the tier list. 
because that's when I started like building balanced teams and then generation four is going to be a shit show on how long that takes me plus the list just grows each time for the most part but now we're going to go and we're going to try and pick out who I think is the best of each category but in the best of making a team so I think a lot of this is going to surprise a lot of people because I'm not going to go for Tyranitar here and my one caveat here is I can't pick any of the legendaries or mythical and I cannot pick any of the starters so we're just building a team if we just came to the generation how to build a team I think we have to give it to our man Heracross was an absolute unit in this game the bug fighting type it has its weaknesses but his special defense sure as hell makes up for it and I just think he's one of the greatest Pokemon of this generation um, after that we're gonna pick a second Pokemon here and who do I want if I want to make it through the generation successfully, I want a steel type. No, you know what? I want the fire type. I'm going to go Houndoom. Houndoom gives us the fire type that we'll need to make it through. So we'll have fire, bug fighting, and we're looking pretty solid on our team thus far. Here, we need to pick another Pokemon to make it through. Um... Honestly, I think we're going with this guy. I think the water electric type is going to be the most valuable if we only have a four-man team. Effectively, so... You know, I think that's a pretty good way to go. Now, let's go to the C tier. Who are we going to pick here? Hmm. Man, I don't know. I really have no idea for this one. They all kind of suck. I'm going to go Fortress. I don't like him very much. And by very much, I mean almost not at all. But um, he could stall, and that's going to be helpful if we had to build a team like this. So we're going to go with Fortress. Uh, for down here, we're going to go with Togepi as our Pokemon choice. Just because all of them are pretty useless. So why not just go with Togepi because it looks the coolest out of all of them, I guess. But I'm going to scroll through this very slowly in case you want to take one final look. I would average Joe thought of this generation, you know, really get to see what exactly average Joe's thoughts were. So there's the S tier, which is our super tier. We love everybody up here. Everybody could be on the team and we'd love them. The A tier, you know, uh, not as great as the S tier, but we could make them work. Everybody down here will work on the team, at least to some degree. Scroll slow, scroll slow. The B tier. Once again, um, they could work. There's better choices, but they're okay. Let's scroll slow again. Puppy itching. Oh, the C tier. Shit. <laughs> no, they're not good. They're not good, but luckily, almost everybody here that I could see has an evolution that leads into something that's pretty good. Except for, you know, like guys like this guy right here, A-Bomb, this little shitty guy. So, you know, there's there is some advantages to using some of the Pokemon here, but they're not great. And then the D tier, absolute garbage. Want to stay away from them. Um, you know, the Megas, obviously I can't judge because our game didn't involve Megas. But everybody else, just stay away from them. But that's going to be it for this episode, guys. It was kind of a quick run through. Um, my thoughts and opinions on this generation are, you know, it, very straightforward how I feel about the Pokemon. I think I made it clear. I think a lot of the S tier should be familiar, but I think the A and the B tier do a good job of mixing it up specifically with some of the Pokemon that I enjoy now in retrospect. But with that being said, after I covered that guy's crotch from your eyes, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, or even consider subscribing because it is free and it does motivate us to continue to make more videos just like this on this channel. Um, with that being said, Ruby will be coming out, I believe, tomorrow, if not the next day. Um, I started, I'm a few episodes in now, things are getting pretty hot and spicy. I had to restart the game once, which is always fun. But, you know, it's a learning process. And, um, it'll also be recorded in this style. My audio probably sounds a little bit different than it normally does. I'm doing something a little bit different for the audio now. It just tends to work a ton better. If you've seen the Minecraft videos, it's the same way I'm doing the audio there. I'm still working out some of the kinks. So some of the episodes are louder than others. I apologize in advance, but 
please consider checking out that series if you like this video or if you enjoy let's plays of any of the pokemon games or if you like the last series you know you'll probably like the next one but that'll be it for this episode guys i hope you enjoyed and we hope to see you on the next one